In ancient China, from around 2070 to 1600 BC, emperors in the Xia, Shang, and Zhou dynasties greatly admired noble women, believing that their beauty and charm could bring peace, prosperity, and even blessings from the gods. Here's how they chose these noble women. Families from all over the empire would bring their prettiest daughters to the emperor's place. These young women wore fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, showing off their beauty and grace. The emperors, sitting on their fancy thrones, carefully watched each girl. They wanted a mix of physical beauty and elegance. They believed that a beautiful queen could make their reign great and bring luck to their kingdom. The chosen women then became part of the emperor's group of wives, and they had important roles in the palace. Lady Fu Hao, from the Shang dynasty, is a famous example. She wasn't just a military leader, she was also really skillful in governing the kingdom. Fast forward to a different era in ancient China, during the Qin dynasty from 221 to 206 BC. Here, we dive into the story of a wise leader named Qin Shi Huang, and how he selected those closest to him. During the time of Qin Shi Huang and the Qin dynasty, the way people were chosen to be close to the emperor changed. Loyalty and trustworthiness became the most important things. Emperor Qin Shi Huang believed that the people close to him should come from families that were very dedicated to his idea of a unified China. He liked it when they were from the Qin family or other noble families that were trustworthy. In the time of Qin Shi Huang, they had very strict rules. Women who could be close to the emperor went through a lot of checks and tests. Instead of just looking at how pretty they were, they checked where their families came from and how loyal their families were to the emperor's ideas. This change was significant in how consorts were chosen and it had a big impact on how women were selected in the later dynasties too. Long ago, within the boundaries of China, the Han Dynasty from 206 BC to 220 AD was a special time known for its stability and prosperity. During this dynasty, the consorts who were very close to the emperor came from noble families. The emperors thought it was important that these consorts were both beautiful and came from good families. They believed that choosing the right consorts to be close to them was really important for their rule. Families from all over the empire would bring their most beautiful daughters to the emperor's palace. These young women went through careful checks to make sure they were not only beautiful, but also from noble families that met the standards to be in the imperial palace. This process often involved fancy ceremonies and rituals, showing how important it was. The consorts who were chosen to be close to the emperor had important roles. They provided companionship to the emperor and gave birth to children who would carry on the dynasty's legacy. The balance between beauty and noble family background helped keep the emperor's family prestigious and the dynasty going. Today, their stories still interest us and give us a glimpse into the rich history of ancient China. In China's long history of dynasties, the Tang Dynasty from 618 to 907 AD was a special time of culture and new ideas. This part is about how they chose the consorts who were close to the emperor, and it was different from how they did it in the past. Empress Wu Zetian, who was very powerful, had a big influence on this change. Empress Wu believed that the consorts close to the emperor should be chosen not just for their looks, but also for their talents and smarts. She thought that women could do more than just be pretty in the palace. So, during the Tang Dynasty, they started choosing women from families who were not very high up in society, but who were really good at things like poetry, writing, and the arts. These women brought something new to the imperial palace with their intelligence. Empress Wu as a ruler showed that being smart and capable was just as important as being beautiful. Her way of choosing people for the palace had a big impact and made it more inclusive. Imagine a time in ancient China when emperors looked for something special in the people close to them. This was during the Song Dynasty, which extended over the period from 960 to 1279 AD. Here, we'll uncover the process of selecting the consorts who would be with them. During the Song Dynasty, the selection process of consorts placed a strong emphasis on education and intellectual talent. While beauty remained important, they also wanted candidates who knew about poetry, literature, and music. They believed that this special approach to choosing consorts would bring both cultural richness and beauty to the imperial court. Women who were exceptional in these areas were highly desired. Scholars and officials recommended them to the emperor's court because they recognized their talents. 
These women became known as literary consorts, and they did more than just stay in the palace. They engaged in literary and artistic activities that made the emperor's lives richer. The Song Dynasty tells the story of these remarkable women, leaving a lasting mark on China's intellectual and artistic history. In China's history, the Yuan Dynasty from 1271 to 1368 AD was quite unique because it was ruled by the Mongols. This was different from the earlier dynasties, and it affected how they chose the consorts. The Mongol rulers had their own customs and traditions, and they cared a lot about loyalty and being skilled in warfare. They liked to choose women from Mongol families and other loyal clans who were highly proficient in martial skills and very dedicated to protecting the empire. This focus on martial skills made the way they chose consorts different. During this time, there was a mix of Mongol and Chinese customs in how they selected women. It showed how the Yuan dynasty was a blend of two cultures, and it changed how they looked for consorts. This mix of customs added an interesting aspect to China's history. During the Ming dynasty, which ruled from 1368 to 1644 AD, they went back to the old ways of choosing consorts. Emperors started looking for women from noble families again, and they wanted these women to be beautiful, virtuous, and able to have children. This focus on traditional values made the dynasty feel like it was continuing the old traditions. Women from different parts of the empire were brought to the imperial court. They had to go through strict checks to make sure they were beautiful and came from noble families so they could be part of the emperor's harem. The Ming dynasty believed that beauty and noble lineage were really important for consorts. These qualities showed how important the imperial family was and made sure the dynasty would keep going through the birth of new heirs. Going back to these old ways connected the Ming dynasty with the earlier dynasties of China. The Qing dynasty ruled from 1644 to 1912 AD, and it was a unique time because it was under the control of the Manchu people. This part explores how they chose consorts, which were strongly influenced by Manchu customs and traditions. During this time, emperors from the Qing dynasty really liked women from Manchu noble families. They selected candidates who followed Manchu customs very closely, which mixed with Chinese traditions in the selection process. This mix of cultures made the imperial court very interesting and diverse. In this period, consorts continued to have important roles in the imperial court. They had a big impact on culture and politics during this time. The Qing dynasty's embrace of Manchu customs added a special element to how consorts were chosen in Chinese history. Imagine a hidden world inside the vast palace of ancient China. Here, chosen women lived by strict rules and old traditions away from the outside world. Once they were in the harem, these women were given ranks based on how much the emperor liked them. The most important women became consorts or even empresses, while others had different roles and jobs within the harem. Life in this secret place was full of competition. The consorts constantly tried to get the emperor's attention and favor, which sometimes led to alliances, rivalries, and even political schemes. It was a world of privilege and challenges, and the consorts played crucial roles in how the imperial court worked. Even though life was complicated and pressured, the consorts in the imperial harem had a lot of power and influence. They did more than just being companions. They were important in politics, culture, and society during that dynasty. As we journey back in time through Chinese history, we encounter a tradition that had a big impact on this ancient land. This tradition was all about choosing women for the imperial court, and it had a profound effect on politics and society. Over many centuries and different dynasties, this way of selecting women changed a lot. It reflected the values and customs of each time. But deep down, it always believed that choosing these women could change the destiny of empires. This belief stayed strong throughout Chinese history. This tradition didn't just shape empires, it also made China's culture richer. It added complex details to the story of China. Today, we still explore and celebrate this tradition, which connects us to the past and shows us the timeless charm of China's history. Picture a time in ancient China when dynasties shifted and new chapters in history unfolded. This period of transition from the Ming Dynasty to the Qing Dynasty, spanning from 1368 to 1912 AD, was a time of profound change and the rise of a new ruling group. In the Ming Dynasty, consorts were typically chosen from noble Chinese families with a focus on their beauty, virtue, 
and ability to bear heirs. However, as the Ming Dynasty's power waned, the Qing Dynasty, led by the Manchu ethnic group, took center stage. The Qing emperors had a preference for women from Manchu noble families and insisted on strict adherence to Manchu customs and traditions in the selection process. This transformation represented a unique fusion of Manchu and Chinese customs in choosing consorts. Despite these shifts, the tradition of consorts continued to hold significance within the imperial court. Women still wielded influence over the political landscape, enriched the nation's cultural diversity, and contributed to the enduring legacy of the dynasty. Imagine a time in the early 20th century when winds of change swept across China, transforming its destiny. This was the era when the age-old imperial system, dating back centuries, drew to a close, starting in 1912. It was a transition that marked a profound departure from deeply rooted traditions. The fall of the Qing dynasty and the birth of the Republic of China in 1912 signaled the definitive end of the imperial era. With this transformation, the once familiar practice of choosing consorts and the existence of the imperial harem became remnants of a distant past. As the imperial court dissolved, the tradition of selecting consorts faded into the pages of history. China embarked on a new path, embracing modernization and political reforms. Yet even in the contemporary era, the legacy of the imperial age and the tradition of choosing consorts persist as captivating subjects of historical and cultural exploration. They stand as a testament to the enduring influence of qualities like beauty, lineage, and, on occasion, exceptional talents in weaving the intricate tapestry of ancient Chinese history and culture. Consider a moment in the early 20th century in China, specifically 1912, when sweeping changes were reshaping the nation. The age-old imperial system, steeped in centuries of tradition, was coming to an end. This marked a profound shift away from long-established ways of life. As the Qing dynasty fell and the Republic of China emerged, the practice of selecting imperial consorts and maintaining an imperial harem became relics of the past. However, the impact of these consorts on Chinese culture persisted in remarkable ways. Imperial consorts were not merely symbols of status, they were influential patrons of the arts, nurturing painters, poets, and calligraphers. Their support transformed the artistic landscape of the era, leaving an indelible mark on Chinese creativity. Furthermore, the elegant fashion sense of imperial consorts set trends that transcended the palace walls. Their clothing and accessories captivated society, shaping fashion preferences for years to come. But their influence extended beyond art and fashion. These consorts actively engaged in charitable activities and promoted education. Their benevolent actions left a lasting legacy that continues to benefit Chinese communities today. The legacy of imperial consorts endures as a testament to their profound impact on the history and culture of ancient China. It's a testament to how they not only adorned the imperial courts, but left an enduring imprint on the heart of Chinese society. Think about a time in ancient China when something really interesting was happening. Imperial consorts, who were important people in the palace, also played a big role in the world of making friends with other countries. When members of the royal family married people from other countries, it wasn't just about love. It was also about making friends with those countries and keeping peace. These consorts, who came from different countries, helped share their culture and traditions with the people in the palace. This wasn't just about politics, it was also about getting along with other countries. Sometimes, this mix of cultures made things better between China and other nations. Their work in making friends with other countries made China look good on the world stage. These imperial consorts were like bridges between China and other nations, helping everyone get along and work together. Imagine a time in ancient China when something important happened. It was about the special women in the palace who had a big impact on Chinese history and culture. Even though they lived a long time ago, their influence is still felt today. People tell their stories in books, movies, and TV shows. This helps us understand their lives better and keeps their memory alive for new generations. The things they did and the way they lived are still important to China. Today, people in China still value things like beauty, being from a good family, and having special talents, but in different ways. The legacy of these special women connects the past to the present in China. It shows how they made China's history rich and unforgettable. 
Let's go way back in time, to a place where history is a bit like a fog. We're talking about the Jia and Shang dynasties, a time when women had important roles in families and in religious matters. We don't have a lot of written records from this time, but we can learn from things found by people who dig up old artifacts. These women were not just wives, they were really important in their families and in the religious part of life. By looking at things that archaeologists have found and reading mysterious writing on animal bones, we can figure out more about how these women lived. Even though they lived a long time ago and we don't know everything about them, we can tell that they had a big impact on shaping the early days of China. Let's delve into the world of imperial consorts, where their influence reached far beyond the palace walls. They embraced the role of cultural patrons, nurturing the growth of arts and intellectual pursuits. Their steadfast support breathed life into Chinese culture, leading to a flourishing of poetry, writing, and art. In this exploration, we'll uncover the pivotal role played by consorts as guardians of culture, paying tribute to their enduring contributions to China's vibrant artistic heritage. Imperial consorts didn't just stay in the palace, they played a big part in supporting culture. They helped art, writing, and poetry to grow. We'll learn about how important they were in this journey. These consorts were like protectors of culture. They made sure that art and creativity thrived in China. Their support made a big difference. Let's journey back in time to ancient China, where women held distinctive and sacred roles. They actively participated in religious ceremonies and assumed positions as spiritual guides, establishing profound connections with the divine. From revered Taoist priestesses to devoted Buddhist nuns, we'll delve into how women exerted a profound influence on the spiritual tapestry of Chinese society. In this ancient era, women didn't merely lead ordinary lives. They held significant positions in matters of religious significance. They conducted sacred ceremonies and established connections with the divine, which encompassed communication with deities or spirits. Some were known as Taoist priestesses, while others embraced the path of Buddhist nuns. These remarkable women played a pivotal role in shaping the spiritual beliefs and practices of the Chinese people, leaving a lasting impact. In the past, during a time called the Southern and Northern Dynasties, women in China had very different lives. The world was full of changes, and these women had to adapt to shifting politics. They left a strong mark on their local cultures and showed great strength as they faced conflicts and challenges. During this time, women weren't just passive observers. They actively took part in shaping their era's stories. Their tales are filled with bravery, wisdom, and determination, giving us a unique view of what life was like back then. Beyond the political struggles, these women also contributed to their community's culture and society, showing their resilience in tough times. These women's stories give us a fascinating look into a time when being strong and determined was crucial. As we learn about these remarkable individuals, we discover the many roles they played in influencing history and making ancient China's memory richer. As we reflect on China's imperial history and the remarkable women who occupied the throne, we are brought to the culmination of their stories. Their roles, contributions, and enduring challenges have left an indelible mark on Chinese culture and society. In this final part, we have distilled the valuable lessons from their narratives, emphasizing the enduring impact of these exceptional women. Throughout the annals of China's rich history, these women's journeys have served as a source of inspiration and wisdom, offering insights into the complexities of leadership, resilience, and the evolving roles of women in society. Their legacies continue to shape modern China, reminding us of the profound and lasting influence of these extraordinary individuals.